sick of the winter storms back here at home and wish you could change the weather, you'll want to see what scientists have in mind. What if global warming, the subject of years of debate, could just be dialed down like a balky thermostat? That's the promise of geoengineering, the intentional remaking of Mother Earth, and also weather modification, the small-scale version of the same. Both are enjoying a moment of hand-waving support, but this is not their first spin through public life. In fact, weather and climate control had an earlier golden age between 1945 and 1980. During that period, the scientists launched ambitious experiments. Those efforts yielded fear and a newfound respect for nature, but little else. New attempts at geoengineering could absolutely fail, too. But even if they don't, there's a serious moral question about the cost of success. Modern meteorology was born out of World War II, the first air conflict where weather played a decisive role. In England, Allied forces lit a fire 400 yards long, hoping to burn fog off the runways. And the gambit actually worked. They modified the weather. At the same time, the U.S. government funded the first machine forecast, a project sold on the merits of predicting the rains and winds, but also directing them with pinpoint precision. It was called the Meteorology Project, and like today's weather modification efforts, it was seen as a high-stakes fight for survival. The belief was that the nation first to control the weather would forever control the world. Progress was swift through the 50s and 60s, Congress created a Committee on Weather Control. General Electric discovered a chemical way to make it rain. The military tried to use that method to weaken the power of Hurricane King, and that led to Project Storm Fury, a Navy effort to, among other dreams, use hurricanes as natural weapons. And then there was Project Popeye in Vietnam, a mission to flood out the supply route known as the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Today, natural beauty has new enemies, and we need new weapons. The type of they are the product. Lyndon Johnson, way back in 1965, warned of the dangers of CO2. This generation has altered the composition of the atmosphere on a global scale, he told Congress. To address the problem, his science advisors suggested not a reduction in pollution, but a chemical brightening of the clouds, the better to reflect unwanted sunlight. That's the kind of madcap idea that's back in the news. It's often described as plan B, should all the protests and the politics fail. There's talk of cannon-fired reflective dust and clouds of reflective bubbles. There are musings about artificial forests, algae blooms, and free-floating filters to suck carbon from the air. And of course, some researchers have never given up on the old military dream of owning the weather. The first golden age died out in 1978 the year of a UN ban on hostile, long-term modifications of the environment. But the resolution wasn't just a policy shift, it was a shift in belief as well. Carl Gustav Rosby, one of the scientists behind the Pentagon Meteorology Project, grew wary of humankind's increasing powers. Tampering can be dangerous, he told Time in 1956. Nature can be vengeful. The same could be said today.